Kyle of Exorder. Welcome to 69 Faces of Rock. How are you doing today? I'm great, Mark. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you back. Uh, you have a brand new album out. You want to maybe show it? Right, right there. It's called The Factum Omnium, right? Ooh, How weird. did you put this album together? Uh, well, we... Uh, the fastest track to that story is we were just really starting to be on the road to support More in the Southern Skies when the pandemic hit full speed. And uh, we were on tour with Overkill and with two shows left, everything got shut down. We had to go home for lockdown. So instead of uh, wasting time, we just started with pre-production. We had some material written, we started uh, just kind of throwing things at each other. And yeah, you know, it took a little while, but uh, you know, we've been sitting on a finished product since the end of the summer. Uh, just waiting for the right moment to unleash it and it just made sense to wait until we could get out and actually support it on tour So it's been a process To my ears the album sounds very solid. What reactions are you getting uh, on the road? Uh, it's been mostly uh, strong uh, reaction a good reaction um, You know you get your handful of people and this is oh here we go train. Yeah uh, We're giving you the best of Chicago the train is coming the sirens are on all kinds of good things, all kinds. I love the train. <laughs> I love the train. So, yeah, um, uh, what was, oh yeah, so the, the, the reviews mostly have been favorable. Mm -hmm. You know, you get a handful of people that have their preferences. They, you know, there's still people that are mad that we, uh, that the original lineup in 1988 uh, started being compromised, so you can't please everybody. No, you can't. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I'm noticing most people are saying that they feel like it's not just true and honest exhorter, but that it's, uh... Oh, boy. Something something big is happening. That's an ambulance. But that, uh, it's, it's, it's a show, it shows a growth mm -hmm. in what we're doing. And that's what you want to do. I don't want to regurgitate the same album. Over no, no. Um, how did you go about regrouping once, once Vinny left the band? Uh, well, we, we pretty much were rolling uh, on all cylinders uh, immediately, basically. You know, he just decided he didn't want to be a part of it, sold his share of the business, and uh, we haven't seen or heard from him since. So um, that's, that's fine, you know. We, we, we were uh, in contract to do some touring that year, so we just went out as a four-piece at that time. And completed the tours, and uh, then we started after the pandemic putting the album together. So and here we um, are. Vinny kind of left abruptly. Uh, was there ever any explanation given as to why he left? Well, he wasn't happy. Okay. You know, so he wasn't happy. We weren't happy, and now everybody's happy. I think. I so, guess that's how we are. <laughs> so can't speak for him. Um, you brought in Pat O'Brien into the band. Correct. Um, how is he working out? I mean, how did you find him? Uh, actually, uh, Jason and Pat have known each other for many years. They're both from the greater Cincinnati area. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, known each other since they were teenagers. So, I knew Pat over the years between Singing for Trouble, playing with Exhorter, uh, and we were casual acquaintances. But Jason said, man, you know, we when I started playing the guitar, he's like, who, who should we get for the other guitar part? And I'm like, I don't know. He said, well, I've been thinking about asking Pat. So I said, mm -hmm. yeah, I love Pat. Let's, let's ask him. So we did, and uh, Pat eventually came to rehearsals, and it's kind of like a stray cat. He came by, and we fed him, and he hadn't left yet. So That's great. <laughs> was there ever a time with all these shakeups that you maybe consider maybe calling it a day? Was that ever nah, something No, nah, especially not this time. Like. It was easy to walk away before because there were reasons for me to be unhappy. Mm -hmm. I have no reason to be unhappy now. Not to mention, I, I gave up a pretty comfortable life uh, to get back into this. So now, uh, now I'm doing it out of, out of sheer stubbornness, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, once you kind of reassembled the lineup, what would you say was the biggest challenge? Um, well, if there ever was one, <laughs> finding finding the right team, the mm -hmm. right lineup. Um, and that eventually happened when it, w it just came down to me, Sasha, and Jason. And I, I said, I really want to take a crack at playing and singing. It, it's going to simplify things a lot. I know I can do this. I've been a musician since I was eight years old, mm -hmm. long before I was ever a singer. 
So uh, I, I just got together with the two of them. We jammed it uh, January maybe of 2022. And they were like, yeah, let's do this. So we that's when we decided let's mm -hmm. approach Pat and see what's going on with him. And, and what was it like to transition from being a frontman that jumps around and is able to do things to all of a sudden being a guitar player slash frontman? It really wasn't difficult for me. Uh, I'd been there before with my old band Floodgate. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's different riffing than Floodgate was. Floodgate was more of a rock, bluesy, bluesy rock metal thing, whereas this is a thrash you know, hardcore-ish thing. But, you know, for me, I, I learned from a little old lady when I was in eight, uh, eight years old in third grade how to tap my foot to a metronome and play the trumpet. And I think because of that, I've got a natural tendency towards any instrument I want to play. Um, in the light of previous questions, this new album to me feels like more like a statement than a record. What do you think? Fair enough. Uh, more trains! More trains! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I could look at them all day. Uh, yeah, it, you're not wrong. Um, we definitely felt like uh, there was enough that had happened to us in the last few years. Uh, I mean, make a list. Like, who didn't? You know, anybody that lived through 2020 had a, uh, <laughs> anything to, to give them uh, food for thought. So we just said, let's let's make the best album that we can for starters mm -hmm. but we had to make sure that and we kicked some songs aside that weren't fitting of exhorter or of this album so mm -hmm. we just said put those later for another project or maybe something down the line that we do but we felt like let's let's make the album that we want to hear something that you know along the spirit of old Beatles Black Sabbath Led Zeppelin albums Queen mm -hmm. how they they were very uh, varied in song style throughout. You know, like look at A Night at the Opera by Queen. You've got heavy, raging songs, and then you've got almost vaudevillian Broadway kind of True. songs, and then folky songs. So that's kind of what we, we didn't want this thing to be on autopilot. Mm -hmm. We wanted this to really have a lot of ebbs and flows, peaks and valleys, that sort of thing. Um. Tell me about the new songs. How did they originate? I mean, feel free to even read some titles and sure, and, and, sure. And, uh, yeah, that's, you know, explain some of we've these. We've got twelve new songs on here. Yep. Um, Jason and Sasha crafted eight of these songs mm -hmm. themselves, uh, in the, musically, and that was the start of it. They, they had a bit of a head start than I did. I came along and I added four more that I worked on by myself uh, with a, uh, a drum program. But what we did was we got all the songs together that we felt were going to be the album, and then we presented them to each other and started crafting them and saying, I think we should try this. Or maybe this could be a little different. Let's, you know, let's get rid of this part. And we were very open with each other about what worked for a siege and what didn't. And, and if somebody felt like they had to put their foot down about a part, that wasn't a problem either. Mm -hmm. and, and that's usually a difficult thing. I know it's been in the history of this band and the songwriting process, it hasn't always been easy or pleasant and agreeable, but this time we took great care in making sure that each other's voice was heard, everybody's input was respected, and I think when we threw what worked against the wall and let it stick, pulled away the parts that weren't working and improved them and replaced them with stuff that did, I think it, it served the album a lot better. It served the songs. In, in European, which, which songs stand out from the album? I mean, or, or the ones you play live? Depends on what you're asking me today. Uh, uh, on this tour, we're playing Year of the Goat. That was our first That's my single. favorite, actually. Uh, it's, it's a great song. It's a great hook. Yeah. You know, I, I hear people say all the time, I hear it in my sleep. Uh, Forever and Beyond Despair, we're playing that one and also under the gaslight so those are the three we've got a 45 minute set on this tour but we're about to do some headlining shows in europe so we're going to add a, probably another three in 2024 what are you singing about uh these songs are basically uh, that the defectum omnium is latin and it translates to the failure of all so it was inspired by just the state uh the, current, the state of events that the world is in right now, mm -hmm. um, I just feel like people are lost and, and self-serving and less uh, sympathetic and empathetic towards 
the common uh, the common man on the street and sure. uh, you know natural disasters uh, just tragedy everywhere and it just feels like the earth is trying to shake us off like fleas hmm. and, I, and I don't even I even said this before I didn't coin this idea but I think it's not uh, unfitting that that the pandemic wasn't the virus we're the virus the pandemic was earth's way of making an antibody to get rid of us <laughs> so if we don't do something yeah. soon to fix things uh, we're gonna be hanging out with the dinosaurs and saber-toothed tigers oh boy um, do you think you are able to reach the balance between the current sound and version of Exorder and the classic years yeah I mean you know the last thing we want to do is regurgitate a classic album in the history of this band. I wouldn't want to do that with any band. I, mm -hmm. I, I think it's important to keep the spirit of the band in the music. And you know, I mean, if we came out and did like a reggae version of something, it would look ridiculous. Sure. It really would. But for us to incorporate things that are influential to us, like the the Gregorian chant "Defectum Omnium," the title track that leads into "Stolen Hope" in this album, I I did that because I sang three years in high school and college in the uh, in the chorus and we sang Gregorian chants so I just made my own and just put a different spin on it uh, that wouldn't have happened had I not had that experience in school and I felt like well it, it definitely ties into the old stuff mm -hmm. with the slaughter in the Vatican stuff it kind of has that feel to it uh, Jason did the acoustic interlude in between that and lacing the well called three stages of truth he played all that the guitar bass everything and these are the things I think that are giving this album a much different flavor is we're, we're it's not that we've never done these things on other albums but we I don't know that we ever really featured it like it is mm -hmm. on this one so you know throw that in with giving more of a nod to our hardcore and punk influence and uh, the fact that we came from the punk scene in New Orleans we did not come from the metal scene in New Orleans. We started on the punk scene, so it makes sense for us to show those uh, those roots in our songwriting as well, you know? Well, the album feels really good. I mean, it, it, there's you. a great flow. Uh, you can see the band going forward, yet there is that little anchor in, sure. in, in, in some of the classic sounds. So um, that kind of brings me to my next question is, what's the feeling like in the band these days? I mean, we... we we love to be with each other. We love to work together. Um, it's a hard life coming out on tour. We're doing it van style, and it's not as comfortable as it was when we had uh, the ability to afford a bandwagon a few years ago. But it is what it is. We're doing this for the love of it, not because of the money. I can promise you that. And there's the train. Um, finally. Since you told me you've sat on this material for a while and looks like you really are on the roll, are there any new songs being worked on? Uh, we, we still have songs, like I said, that, that probably could have made it on this album that, that just kind of got put on the back burner. Jason's got a million ideas. He's really uh, a spectacular rhythm guitar player. He, he played all of the rhythm guitar tracks on the songs that he and Sasha put together. I played all the rhythm guitar tracks on the ones I put together. Uh, when we brought Pat into the picture, we asked him if he wanted to learn the songs and play the rhythm tracks. He said, why? Y'all are killing it. You know, like, mm -hmm. there's no reason. It would probably take away from the feel of the songs. He said, just let me play solos. And then next album, Pat's interested in being a contributor as well. So everybody throws it in the pot. Sky's the limit. That's it, man. Any fun stories from the road? <laughs> uh, not really. The road's hard. It's not fun. <laughs> the shows are great. You know, I mean, yeah. we just did South, uh, South America, uh, a Latin American run, Central and South America with violence earlier this year. We'd never been. Uh, the kids were great. They were fantastic. And I say kids because it really was a young audience. There were some old timers there too, but uh, they just, they really brought it. They beat each other up out there. And then we go out to meet them and they're just so nice and sweet. It's like, this is the best. I, I'd never been. I had no idea what to expect. Uh, and the shows on this run have been great too. It's just eight, but uh, I mean we've had no terrible shows, and we, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. <laughs> it doesn't matter what night it is. People are coming out, and the audiences are getting younger. 
That's the best fantastic. Part. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.